Welcome, welcome everybody. God bless you. Brother Brian here. In this video, we are going to continue with our study of Ephesians according to the word of the Lord given to Mike Thompson, God's prophet. We are reading from Ephesians 3 today. I just spent my 10 to 15 minutes in worship and then I sat still, I quietly prayed in tongues as I allowed some soaking music in the background. And I, my God, every time I just sit still before the Lord, I just feel so different. His presence has just permeated my being. I am, it's gonna be interesting today. Lord, we give you thanks, we give you glory. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that everything that I feel and even more be transmitted to your people, your precious people, who are wanting to learn, Father, from you and even through the things you have taught me. And it is all for your own namesake, Lord. The glory belongs to you alone and shall forever be yours alone. Lord, we thank you, and we invite you, Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, to make yourself manifest. Holy angels, you're welcome to manifest. Cloud of witnesses, you're welcome to manifest, however you want, Father, in Jesus' name. All right, Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I briefly, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Well, that's chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 1 through 5. Notice in verse 3, Paul says, how that by revelation he, who is Jesus, made known to me the mystery. As I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. As I've said before, that, myth, that word mystery used in Greek, the word is mysterion. And it is connected to the word mysticism, mystic, and such. So I've already mentioned that before. I won't go into that again. Hopefully you guys have already watched Ephesians chapter 1, prophetic teaching, and Ephesians chapter 2, prophetic teaching. So let's go on. You see in verse 5, he says, which in other ages, it wasn't time yet for the Lord to reveal those things. In the time of Moses, the time of David, the time of the other prophets, Daniel and so forth, the Lord knew why he needed those things to happen. And even in the book of Hebrews, it shows that the things that happened in the Old Testament were a to serve as an example for us. And Paul is speaking to those in his time. And here we are, 2,000 years later, just about from the time when Paul wrote this. And we can still look to God's word for examples of things that we should not do, like those who disobeyed, and the things that we should do, those who obeyed God. And the Lord says here in verse 5, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit, revelation, 
comes by the Spirit of God. So, when people say Revelation is closed, when they say there is nothing more to add to the Bible, number one, they're not understanding. And I'm very sorry if they have learned from pastors and such who don't walk closely with God but only teach about what they think they know about God. It's not an insult. It's nothing against them. It's sad. It's unfortunate. Because then the people who go to the church, these churches and they listen, they don't see God for themselves. To realize to recognize, to discern that what is being said is not true. So let us not be lazy sheep, lazy lambs, and just simply listen and believe what someone tells us without for ourselves having our own relationship with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to prove that what I'm saying is the Word of God. I'm going to explain it to you. Revelation comes by the Holy Spirit, right? That's what we introduced. That's what we said to begin with. And we can see, I already did a teaching between, uh, for the chapters John 14, 15, 16, and 17. Hopefully you have seen those so far. That's what the Lord placed on my heart back in December, 2021. Okay, and I'm gonna read something to you here very clearly and you will understand the point I'm going to make. So in John 16, Jesus speaking, John chapter 16, verse 13 onward, he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth comes, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. Did you know the Holy Spirit doesn't just say whatever he wants? No, he only says what Jesus tells him to say and what the Father tells him to say. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, right? Just as we just said, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. That is prophecy. For those same people who say, all prophecy has been fulfilled. No, and I'm very sorry that you've been taught the wrong way, but it's not too late to just ask God to help undo all the wrong teachings you have assimilated throughout the months and years and maybe even decades. God can always correct us if we are willing to be corrected. So, <laughs> Proverbs 12, verse 1 says, He who hates correction is stupid. Now that's a specific version where it says that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that is the NLT, New Living Translation version that says it that way. And the Lord just brought that scripture to my mind as I was saying this. Didn't exactly want to say it, but that's what God says. I'm just repeating, so don't get mad at me. Let's let's see. Oh, look at that. Here, reading from the New King James Version, Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoever loves instruction <clears throat> loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. It literally just says that. And um, all right, well, we'll get right back to, to that. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see. You can see I'm reading from Proverbs. Give it a second for the light to fix itself. There we go. Okay, Proverbs, right? So now look down below what it says right there. Right? So you see it for yourself. I'm not putting words in God's mouth. That's what he said. Most likely you're like, whoa, I've never seen that. Or you maybe you've read it and it just didn't stand out. 
understandable. Happens to me all the time. It's going to happen to us all the time, so we just may as well get used to it, right? All right, so back to John. We were talking about the Holy Spirit is the one who brings truth and revelation, right? Because that's what we're reading in Ephesians chapter 3. I believe it was verse 5. Now, why is it important for us to realize that the Holy Spirit brings revelation? He's the one who reveals. And what does he reveal? Mysteries. So the function, the job, the job description, the job duties of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into all truth, to reveal mysteries. Now, if you're revealing a mystery, that means it was not known before. So the Holy Spirit can teach us things that we don't know, that we didn't previously know, that may not be black and white, plain and simple, obvious on the surface, right? but that we actually have to seek, we have to ponder, we have to pray about. So this right here, this Bible, these 66 books are enough for salvation and enough for godly living. But there is so much more. And we touched on that again. The scripture the Holy Spirit gave me once was John 21, 25, regarding the Lord not being able to be put in a box. Okay, so there's a lot of mysteries that the Holy Spirit is still revealing. And He's revealing them because the Holy Spirit is at work, right? Not for those who say prophecy is done. For those who say there's no more revelation. Well, guess what you just said? You just said, indirectly, but yet very clearly, that the Holy Spirit is not performing those duties. When Jesus Christ Himself just said it right here that that is his job description. Don't put the Holy Spirit out of a job because when you do that, you're closing yourself off, you're closing, you're shutting the door and the Holy Spirit cannot come in unless he's welcome. But if you choose to believe there's no more, no more prophets, there's no more prophecy, there's no more revelation, don't complain if you don't see wonders and signs and miracles and don't complain if you don't have visitations and habitation and godly encounters and dreams and visions and raptures and trances. Peter had a trance when he was on top of the, in the city of Joppa in the book of Acts. He had a trance and trances still happen this day. Don't complain if you want to see heaven while you're still on earth. Maybe you don't even believe that. But obviously I'm not talking to any of you directly. I'm just saying it in a way to where it's just like, wait a minute, kind of like shaking you up. Wait a minute. This religious box that many, that many times the, the enemy through other people or through people who, who don't really love God by their actions and then yet they are at the pulpit or whatnot, this is what happens. And this brings a division into the church that is not good. Now, we should already know that Jesus Christ does divide because even in the scriptures he said he did not come to bring peace but a sword to divide father against son mother against uh, daughter etc etc it doesn't mean the lord's will is to divide and not have unity and harmony that's not what it means obviously it simply means that there are those who are going to choose to stand on the truth and choose to follow jesus and it's going to divide them between those who choose not to do the same. That is the division that happens. All right, so that's what that means, in case you've ever wondered. All right, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3. So verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So you see the apostles and prophets. Now, I think back in 2002 when I met a man of God who was an apostle and he, he gave me the testimony how the Lord is the one who called him to be an apostle. And I didn't even know an what an apostle was. And funny, he didn't either, he said, when God called him. And he said, I didn't even really know, to be honest. And, and unfortunately, I think there is an abuse 
these days in the church of people wanting to have this title of apostle um, and uh, or whatnot but anyway no one can be called to the fivefold ministry which we're going to read about in Ephesians 4 tomorrow no one can be called to that office or that sphere or that calling unless it's God himself and then it must be confirmed you can't seek that title you honestly you shouldn't you, you shouldn't want anything that is not in line with God's perfect and preordained will for your life if you are not called to the fivefold ministry honestly it it's just less responsibility you can still have supernatural encounters experiences you may not have that title or whatnot but a true believer from the most basic believer to someone who's called to as to be an apostle to affect nations to speak internationally to to speak to tens of millions and such there's no difference both have a responsibility to fulfill their call one's call is one is given five talents one is given two one is given one it's up to god our joy should be to fulfill our calling and not step out of line and do what we think we want right because we if we're not in the will of god how can we be certain and how will we have that peace knowing god will be right there with us protecting us guiding us if we're stepping out of his will right so we'll talk about uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow that's going to be a heavy one because i refer to that a lot and it's going to confirm a lot of things um which we've already touched on regarding is there still revelation is there still prophecy is there still prophets yes yes and yes and it won't end until and i'll share what that until is tomorrow so make sure you come back <laughs> all right so verse six uh it's a continuation of verse five so has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets verse six that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. He just confirmed what I just said. Now, obviously, I had to turn the page, so I had not read that. And I, I don't I don't read the chapters before I come and make a video because I want it to be the Holy Spirit to lead me completely. So so yeah, it literally says that Paul is literally saying that he became a minister according to the gift of grace, of the grace of God that was given to him, meaning he was chosen to be an apostle and he didn't choose it himself. And it's a special grace to be an apostle it's a special grace to be a prophet it's a special grace to be an, an evangelist a pastor a teacher and other offices and such a seer a prayer intercessor warrior and such so why would we want to try to do something to which god has not given us a grace to sustain us in that which we're trying to do let's just let's not oppose ourselves right doesn't doesn't make much sense so all right so let us continue verse 8 to me who am less than the least of all the saints this grace was given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ notice what he said at the very beginning to me who am less than the least of all the saints he's not beating himself up he's not having a pity party he's not discouraging himself that's not what he's doing i know that that should be pretty obvious but just in case there are new believers here that's what i'm saying he's not beating himself up he's expressing humility and meekness which is an extremely important fruit of the character of Christ 
that's probably one of the, the things that I, that I recognize first and foremost when I meet somebody, when I'm listening to someone. It's, at least for me, it's just very easy to spot. If someone is talking about themselves, if someone is boasting about themselves, if someone is receiving compliments and they're not giving God the glory, and somehow they're just making things all about them, I step away. I quietly humble myself and I, it's like I can feel the fear of God for them. Pride always goes before the fall. Pride is the reason Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. I do not tolerate pride in my life. And I think that many times it, such sins like that can sneak in and and can the enemy can come in he knows that a certain person will not become prideful or arrogant whatever but he can sneak in another way and try to deceive that person like maybe someone who is saying you know no 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 what, what i'm telling you is right etc and refusing to to want to listen to someone else etc like that's a form of pride right there right so the enemy tries to get clever but as long as we remain close to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will help us and he will correct us and convict us. So meekness and humility is a, an easy way to, an easy thing to see in a person's life. Um, so anyway, it's not for us to judge. It's just for us to discern and to be aware. Okay. So Paul is speaking out of humility. And he says that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold what did that mean many fold many um more than one basically like if you look at a diamond gemstone it has many sides but it, yet it's still one diamond it has many faces many cuts many um vertices i guess that's the mathematical term it's been a while since i've used that right and such so manifold wisdom layers of wisdom as we know god loves to do things in layers and levels of revelation and such so verse 10 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of god might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he god accomplished in christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. So we're supposed to be walking in boldness. We shouldn't be a scared little church. We shouldn't be afraid and timid and and just, you know, obviously when we start we start out with God, it's gonna be like that. We must progress into it. But if we've been like actively practicing our faith three, five years later, and we still haven't, I mean, it's, it, we're not really growing then if we're not, if we're not really becoming like what God says he transforms us into, we have not been given a spirit of fear but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So if we are not rejecting the Holy Spirit and His working in the supernatural, then we're going to begin to experience the supernatural, which is from God, and it will transform our life, and there will be fruit, there will be experience from it to prove the Word of God. And whatever we experience must never go against the Word of God. So, verse 13, Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. 
For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that's your spirit, the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded, imagine a tree and the roots going into the ground, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God so if there are any religious people listening right now God, through Paul, just said he is praying that we may be able to comprehend. Now, why would the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, cause him to pray that we would understand and comprehend the magnitude of God's love, which passes knowledge that's human knowledge, but that doesn't mean it's impossible, because with man things are impossible but with God all things are possible that we would know his love and this is the end result because if we are able to comprehend or grasp spiritually speaking with the mind of Christ in us having been transformed and ingrained in us we will then have a better rather we would be able to have an understanding, a spiritual understanding, not head knowledge, not with our own mind, which is limited. We will have an understanding of the love of God. The end result is this, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You and I, according to what is being said here in verse 19, can be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, I'm speaking this to you pretty much without hesitation and without interruption, but I myself, and I'm telling you plainly, I have never come across this. So as I'm speaking this, reading it, and teaching it, I'm like, whoa. But it's God's word, so I have no problem repeating it. And so I'm just as astounded as many of you are now to think that we can be filled with the fullness of God. Now, don't misunderstand me. It doesn't mean that we become God. No way. No how. It just means that God wanted a family and Adam and Eve messed up. And Christ came as the second Adam, according to the book of Corinthians, and he did what the first Adam could not. And he then sacrificed himself, and now through Christ, we are able, by the Holy Spirit, to be transformed into what Christ intended for us from the beginning. To have a family he could relate to, see eye to eye, but yet them knowing, that's us, that we are created beings created family but God has always been he is the creator always but we are above the angels because once we become born again we are no longer under the under the genealogy of Adam we then are translated from darkness to light from the sinful doomed race of Adam to the genealogy 
There's another word I'm looking for. It's not coming to me. So genealogy of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ was raised and he was the first fruits of many brethren. So not only is Jesus our Lord and Savior, he's also our brother. He is our master, the lover of our soul. You see, he's all in all. He fills all. He's worthy, worthy of it all. And so, he makes it possible that we also may be filled with the fullness of God because it is our inheritance because of what Christ did. He loves us that much. He wanted to share existence with someone he could love. Now, if God is love, how can love be love if love cannot be expressed? Right? And God is love, but he had created beings, angels, cherubim, seraphim. And, and I'm sure there are a lot of other beings we don't even know exist. So definitely don't throw that, don't throw that out the window. Because remember, God doesn't, hasn't shown us everything. There are other galaxies, dimensions, realms. There are things that people like Kat Kerr, like Neville Johnson, like Kevin Zadai, that have seen things such as the 24 elders. They are not human. They are not angels. They're another type of being. Now, I understand you're not going to get that directly from here, but that has come through Revelation, which, which we just explained. The Holy Spirit reveals mysteries. And it doesn't bump it. It doesn't change the gospel at all. So, what's so cool about that is that though God created all these different beings, the relationship between Him and them was creator and creation but with us when we become born again we are adopted into the family of god and he loves us as sons and daughters not the angels not the 24 elders not the seraphim or cherubim or living creatures or any others so we literally become family members with god the creator so we are above the angels and they serve us and the bible says that so let me briefly hop over there that way you all know which by now you should know i'm not going to say something i don't know something about to the glory of god of course so hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says actually let me go back to verse 13 and it's quoting from the psalms but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? So God is speaking to Jesus. That's what he's referring to. And he says, verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits? The angels sent forth to minister for or on behalf of those who will inherit salvation. That's us. And notice this is ministering for ministering on behalf so this goes in line with the revelation that god has taught cat kerr regarding commanding the host and giving them things to do because when we know our authority our identity and then our authority we exercise it and we can speak and command the angels to do things not in a way not in the bad way that it sounds i command you to do this and that no but to do things according to the will of god plus they're not going to listen to us if we're not living righteously and holy right cat curs has also mentioned that for those of you who watch elijah's dreams she has mentioned a lot and when she speaks she doesn't hesitate so she knows and she speaks from what she knows and we all know that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so for her to speak so easily so fluidly about all this god has filled her with this knowledge and revelation and understanding because that is what comes out of her mouth so all right let's all 
Okay, so let's go back to Ephesians 3 and we'll wrap it up from here. Verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, Wow, God's not talking about the power, His power, like outside of us. He's literally talking about the power that works within us. But the question is, are we aware and are we allowing that power within us to manifest? Now again, if, if, if a person chooses to reject the Holy Spirit and reject speaking of tongues and reject that prophets exist and reject that prophecy exists and reject that revelation exists, well wow you've just closed so many doors off you have disconnected yourself from god through the holy spirit put him out of a job and short of telling him that you flat out don't believe what he said jesus john 16. but surely these people will say no i didn't say that don't put words in my mouth how else can you explain telling god that Basically, you don't believe that he's God and he does and that he that he does what he says and that he that his word is true. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter. And so we have to. Yes, the, the word, the scripture we just read says now to him who is able to exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or even think that I means you can't even imagine it god can do it according to the power that works in us meaning god uses vessels so if you want to be used by god then you've got to make sure god's not in a box that he's not in a box you put him in all right all right so the last verse here to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And we'll leave it at that. So praise God. This has been Ephesians chapter 3. I pray the Lord has taught you something, has blessed you. And I look forward to Ephesians 4. That one is going to be that one's going to be really good. So, um, and chapter 5 as well. Oh, yep, of course. And chapter 6 as well. We're getting a lot of meat, spiritual meat. It's time to get out of those diapers. <laughs> it's time to get out of that high chair. It's time to get out of drinking, you know, bottled milk. And we have to grow up. Because only then can God truly use us. And we can experience the life while on earth that Christ died to give us. Because as we obey him and do his will, he will gladly, gladly lavish us with his spiritual blessings. He will meet our needs, health-wise, financial, etc., emotional. And even after that, he'll go beyond and he'll bless us with our wants. So don't get mad at a brother and sister in Christ who's being blessed and you know that they serve God. The devil will always bring up the money issue to get other Christians to beat up other Christians. It's terrible. Now today is January 10th, 2022. And on the 11th hour at the very end, Krista Bullock, Robin Bullock's daughter, spoke on the very thing i just said and i was so happy she said it and i learned another way to look at it and it is so true the enemy will always get christians to to he'll always attack them in the finances so just obey god grow in love with god do what he says and little by little you'll begin to see that he not only takes care of you but he will go even above and beyond just make sure that you always keep God first. And that is that. So God bless you guys. 
And I'll be posting another prophetic word from other servants of God very, very soon. But I hoped that I hope to get this a little earlier to you for those of you who are on the East Coast, like myself. It is 8 p.m., so this should upload in the next few minutes. So God bless you. Take care. And um, once again, Michael Guerin, you were the winner of the Kevin Zeta It's Rigged in Your Favor book. Please contact me at the email found in the About page, which is the same email. It's the only email that's there that's connected with the Zelle um, app for, for anyone who ever wants to give, which no one has to give at all. It's just an option. It's just there for those who are led by the Spirit of God. And many have already done, and all of that is used for God's work. And whatever he needs, if I come across somebody, the Lord quickens me, and the Lord wants to bless them, help them, then that's the type of thing, the, uh, the type of situation where such funds would be used for God's people, not for me. All right? So that's that. Uh, I hope, look forward to hearing from you guys and definitely make sure you're subscribed because it looks like we're up to 35% from 32% like a week ago, which is better. Probably 100 or maybe a couple more got subscribed. But if you've watched like three videos by now already, then you obviously there's something here that God has for you. So hit subscribe. Does it cost you anything? It's a blessing to me. It helps the channel and helps spread things everywhere. So God bless you and I'll catch you soon.